Hi guys, Lucy aka The Watchbox Diaries here with another review. Now today's video comes in the form of a Seiko that is arguably one of their most famous especially to us wonderful watch nerds, and that is the Seiko Pogue. It comes with so much history and charm and backstory, and there's that little space connection as well. I say little, it's a pretty big space connection. So without further ado, let's get into it. So let's start with the originator of the nickname, because it wasn't always called the Pogue, and that was Colonel, 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 William Pogue. So in 1973, Bill was part of the Skylabs missions, obviously to space. And unfortunately, the Amiga Speedmasters, which are probably the most famous space watch, um, they weren't actually issued yet. Um, they were only issued very, very close to the missions. However, during training, people still needed to time stuff. Bill still needed to time stuff. Fairly important things like, you know, engine burns and to do that he needed a chronograph so he went out bought himself a reasonably priced automatic chronograph and it just so happened to be the Seiko he did all of his training with it he did six I think it was like six to twelve months with this watch and he learnt to you know learnt to have this connection with this watch and learn how to how it works so when he eventually got his Speedmaster and he went up into space, he was actually double wristing. So he had his Pogue and he has his Speedmaster. So NASA vets everything that they take on board and this particular watch wasn't actually NASA approved, only the Speedy was. However, he managed to smuggle it on board as part of his personal items. He was up there for, I think it was like 84 days as well, um, excluding spacewalks, and he had this on his wrist the entire time. So it stood the test, I would definitely say. Now there's a whole like nerdy watch subculture cult following for space watches and obviously the Speedmaster was classed as the, you know, the, the, the main watch in space. But the first, very, very first watch was recorded as a Russian watch. I cannot remember the name of it, so if you can, drop it down in the comments. However, the first originally thought automatic chronograph in space was actually a Zin. I think it was a 1985. However, some super eagle-eyed nerdy watch enthusiasts discovered the photographs of um, Bill in space and spied that he had two watches on and he was actually wearing this. So they did a little uh, a little digging, a little official digging and William himself, you know, retired space pilot, actually confirmed that it was all very, very much true. So, what a story. Super quick specs before I go into my likes and dislikes. You're looking at a 40-ish millimeter case. It has a day and a date function obviously a chronograph function with an internal rotating bezel and a lug width of 19 millimeters because in terms of lug width Seiko just loves to watch the world burn with their odd numbers. There's loads about this watch that I really like. First off it has the potential to be a lot like there's a lot going on but they were smart in the fact that they have kept most of the dial and the indices pretty subtle. Um, there's, there's no massive markers, but it's readable still, which is great. And also it's got a really, really funky 70s shape. It's almost cushion shaped maybe, I guess. But yeah, I just really, really like the case shape. I mean, 70s are very in now as well. The colour scheme of the blue and the red I really like, it works really really well together and also the dial colour, like it's so cool, it's so nice, it's so fun, it's so summery, it's almost a sunburst I think and it's yeah like it's just gorgeous to look at, absolutely gorgeous. Another thing that I really really like is how you set the day and the date functions and it's odd it is very odd. So normally you pull out the crown to set both of those things. But no, Seiko like to be odd and different. So you actually push the crown in, depending on sort of level of pressure 
um, yeah, to set the date and the date, which is really unusual. So a couple of the things that either myself or I think other people may dislike about this piece are actually some of the things that I like about it as well. So there is a lot going on and that can be very off-putting for a lot, a lot of people. That also goes for the case shape, the very, very 70s old school case shape and the bright dial color. Now, confession time, I did not like this watch when I first saw it, you know, in my old, even though I liked vintage, I liked the, the, the classy little vintage pieces. And this was a bright and a bold piece and I did not like it to begin with, but I, uh, I'm a changed woman, people. I'm a changed woman. I love this watch so, so much. The original bracelet, um, which is not this one, this is um, an Uncle Seiko bracelet, was very, very jangly. And I don't know if you can hear that, but this one is also very, very jangly, but I guess you can just change the bracelet or the strap. So problem solved, right? Additional confession slash story time. Um, the bezel does scratch. As I found out while I um, was casually wearing this, which is not mine, it is my other half's, just, you know, ha had a few tipples, and we got home and I, very British of me, decided I would make crumpets. Enthusiastically opened the doors to our little pantry area and knocked the bezel on the wall, slash door, I think it was the door. To which I immediately went, I didn't do anything. And it turns out I did do something. Weirdly enough, I'm not allowed to wear it out of the house while drinking, again. It's totally understandable. I am a changed woman, I love this watch. Um, it's such a cool piece to look at, it's really interesting. The story is just fantastic. I love vintage pieces because I love how much history and how many memories and how many stories you can get from a piece and this, is just winning at storytelling. It is one of those, in the watch community, I believe it is one of the most infamous pieces because it's another, if you know, you know. Also, that dial, people, I mean, come on, look at it. It's so pretty. It's not just Grand Seiko that do good dials, like Seiko are also killing it. That is it from me, people. Thank you very much for tuning in, as always. I hope you have enjoyed it. I love hearing from you guys. This is very much a watch enthusiast kind of watch and your thoughts, your facts, your opinions, your feelings about it, I appreciate, so drop them down below. It is a bold color and it is a bold design, so I'm not sure which way everyone's gonna sway with it. So yeah, let me know down below in the comments. As always, if you could help a girl out with those pesky algorithm gremlins, that would be awesome. Make sure you've liked and subscribed and turn on that little bell to be notified of future videos. Until next time, people, thank you very much for tuning in. Bye.